I just wanted to use this as an opportunity um, to give some information about a call for proposals um, or applications, as the slide calls them, um, for teaching in the studio, for hosted and supported co-taught interdisciplinary courses. Um, so we have one happening right now um, that is um, co-taught between drama and art, um, but each semester for the next two semesters, so we're looking for fall and spring of next year, um, we are inviting courses that were, are taught by two faculty members across disciplines. Um, and, and by across disciplines, we're defining it as outside of each other's school. Um, we are, I, I will admit that I've heard some ideas of, well, I want to teach with this person who isn't a teacher here at CMU. I, I would invite you to apply if that's, if that's something you want to do. There are a lot of different ways to make that a reality um, with different types of funding streams and grants. So that's not impossible. I don't want you to feel like it's impossible, but one of you needs to be um, a CFA faculty member as, because we are in the CFA. So the class must serve our mission which is you know, well served by just the call itself, being a laboratory for atypical, transdisciplinary, and interinstitutional research at the intersections of art, science, technology, and culture. Um, the, the studio will supply the classes with a budget, um, which is a, a donation, a gift from Deep Local to support curriculum taught in the studio. Um, and this must have a faculty member from CFA, um, so this is an example of one of the possibilities of teaching here in the studio. Uh, this is the final exhibit of Experimental Capture, which Golan and I co-taught last semester. Um, students were able to display their work. We were able to host people for the evening. Um, there was a massive crowd. This is actually a moment from early on in the night. Um, there were a lot of folks who came. Um, from a lot of different areas, and the students themselves are from across the university. Um, and they also span from, I don't think we have any first year undergrads, but from second year undergrad through PhD. Um, so classes, classes eligible for this opportunity must be open to serving students across the university. That, that is one of the affordances with co-taught transdisciplinary teaching is that, that the cohort itself will be um, diverse in their studies. Uh, no pre prerequisites, hard word for me to say, because I don't like it, maybe. Um, <laughs> because it means that you have to have, you know, this or that, or study that or that, and that is what keeps us in our disciplines. And so not having a prerequisite means that you can expand it. Now, I won't say that this doesn't mean you can't say, hey, I need some skills before you come in the room, but we can deal with that in a different way, um, and I can talk about that in the Q&A section. Uh, you have to communicate with your department or school heads prior to applying, unless you already know that it is feasible, unless you are your department head, which is true for some. Um, it, it needs to be feasible. I know there are a lot of things in our way to do something like this, and that's why I am trying to ply you all with wine and cheese, and to convince everyone to try this, um, because this is how we break the mold, this is how we expand the field. Um, and it's one of many ways. Uh, one tiny offering I have to expand the field. Applicants should consider the studio, its affordances and constraints when considering if it can be hosted here. Um, please note we're a dry lab, so you know if you wanted to um, paint in here, probably not the best space for that. Um, if you wanted to make giant silicone molds, you know, maybe you could arrange it so that that is done outside of here and then you have the class in here. It's not that you can't do those things in classes, it's that you can't do them in here. Um, so if that's the sole objective of your class, then maybe this isn't the place to like spray paint every day. Um, but, you know, you could maybe figure that out. Um, class size, 25 is our max on the registrar, though they haven't updated it and it says less, but I swear it's 25, I have the email. Um, and it can't be less than 15. So, you know, 
if people drop and there's 12 people after registering, that's fine. It's just that we want this class to serve as many folks as we can serve. Um, the class must be able to work in a way that allows the studio to convert into a venue, like right now, um, as necessary. And staff will assist with that breakdown, setup, and things like that. But there is, you know, while it will be the only class taught here, it won't be the only thing done here. Um, so that's important to note. Uh, the class does not need to be new or specifically designed for the studio. So what I mean by that is that if you previously taught a course and you want to invite someone to co-teach it with you because you've never been able to get do that before, that's great. Do that. Media Realities is doing that right now. Um, so it doesn't have to be invented um, course. It could be something you've taught before. Uh, have class times between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Um, we have evening events, so evening classes don't really work well for us. It, you know, if there's something really amazing and it's once a week, we can entertain it, but it's really, really not ideal and will be hard to accommodate. Um, another image of the ways that this space can be used as a dry lab. You know, there's lead-free solder, for example. We can put paper over the tables. You know, it, I want to expand the field of what dry lab could be for you. Um, the application has certain requirements, and I just want to make sure that this is clear. Um, it's only available through Android IDs. That's something that people click when they're in their personal email and tell us the form isn't working. So I'm saying it out loud now. It is working. You have to be logged in through CMU. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm hoping that this is lightweight. I won't read the whole thing here, but a brief statement about your um, syllabus. Um, and how it would be supporting creative and interdisciplinary research. Um, you know, one of the things that I hope for this is that it's, um, it's a way for you to center your creative research in the room and, and not just do service teaching. So, um, another image of possibilities. We can strike the tables, they're all on wheels, they all fold up. The, tape, the chairs either stack or roll away. Um, the floor is currently rubber. The plan is always to keep it soft and, and welcoming to our joints, um, but the floor might change in the future. Um, and at the same time, we can build you know, different seating configurations. Right now, you're in this pod configuration. We also do another configuration of the tables, all, all one large table all through the middle. Um, we have plenty of outlets on the floors. There's a lot of different ways to use this room. Um, but I have not asked, like, if you can hang certain things from these, I would say only as specified by the manufacturer. <laughs> and we can look into that. Um, so the affordances of here, there, you'll be the only class. You'll have a budget. Um, one thing to note about the budget is that the way, and there's um, a portfolio of the um, equipment that we already have that is already available in um, our various cabinetries. Um, and the budget will be used on equipment that will stay in this room after you teach. So it becomes a part of our equipment lending library. Um, we like to invest in weird, atypical things that you can't get at the library and you can't you know, find easily in other places. Um, we also have um, the ability to find to host exhibits of student work. Um, I would say also like, you know, performances could be hosted. Different types of one-off things can be hosted. Even though, you know, the class shouldn't be regularly scheduled in the evening. We've had, you know, work um, evening dinners before a big deadline. Um, you know, we actually have a stage. It's you know, platforms over there. You know, there, there's a lot of ability to perform in this space, just want to say it, um, and more ability as I get to gear up the space. Um, we also have, I already mentioned the flexible arrangements and configurations, so also we will assist in advertising the course. And so we'll put it on our website, we'll put it on posters, um, you know, word will get out about the next class in the studio. And so um, if one of your concerns is no one will take this, um, you know, we'll help get the word out that this new novel thing is happening. Um, 
Also, students will be more aware of studio programming that are in your class. So if you are serving a student body that doesn't normally find themselves here in the studio or doesn't think of themselves as being someone who is well served by the studio, they will start to feel more welcome just by attending classes in this space. Um, this is media reality. If you want to talk at all, Lawrence, I have, you don't even have to get up. Okay, good. We have wireless mics. Another board okay. of the studio. They have more of them. And tuck. <laughs> Hi. I don't really need a mic because I have a big loud voice. But uh, uh, what do you want me to say? So the, this class was I started in 2015, maybe. Um, and I think it was actually part of a CAS grant. Um, where and, and what I'm really enjoying about this iteration is that uh, <clears throat> you know, it, it, it's trying to help us, it, it's definitely helping us become interdisciplinary and reach students that we didn't reach before. And so, uh, I, I taught the class a lot, and um, you know, every other year, I guess since 2015, and I would get HCI students and architecture students, you know, some kind of HCI faculty member figured out that it was happening and would send their students to me, and I don't even know who that is. But, um, but I, the, the group here is quite different, and I think the studio has a sort of wonderful community around it. So. You're kind of getting a built-in interdisciplinary cohort of students, uh, which is really cool. Yeah. And and then um, yeah, so the, the class is is both technically demanding but also conceptually rigorous in the sense that we're trying to use these new technologies like AR or location-based uh, you know sound or you know anything that is using kind of Unity as like a environment to build uh, an experience. But we're challenging the students with like the history of land art and sort of. The, the, the questions about you know site and non-site or what is a community um, how do you perform in a, a place you know or how do you make a story about a place and how do you think about yourself as a as a being as a phenomenological entity not as like a, an object moving through space mm -hmm. right and so and and looking at sort of the ways that these technologies do kind of enforce a certain regime of, of thinking and how to undo that and, and I think it's really great for students to be learning new tools and new technologies and unlearning, I'll use an old word, the ideologies that are incorporated in them. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's sort of the, the overall sort of agenda of the class. And uh, it's interesting, this group of students is more, they don't know me or Johannes as well, as well so like they're, they're actually kind of confused right now, which is kind of great. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll, see how, we'll see how they do. Yeah, so you've expanded the field of students that you normally work with. Absolutely, yeah. And it, I know it's, so I'm putting Lawrence on the spot and he's taught in here like four classes, you know, it's early in the semester, but is there anything that like you're able to do that you weren't able to do in previous iterations of this class? Well, I mean, it's a bigger space and it's, um, it's cool, you know, it's like a cooler space, so yeah, <laughs> it's not like room 103 in Purnell, yeah. so that's nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and like, you know, the project, it's just, it's sort of like, it's just kind of a little bit classier, and, um... What yeah. about co-teaching with Johannes? Co <laughs> Johannes is great, yeah, and, and, um, and yeah, I think that it's just sort of, you feel, what I like the most about it is that it's, it, I'm out of, outside of my department, and so I just feel that, um, I'm, like, I've always been outside of Purnell, I've always run away from, you know, being contained, but it's nice to be supported by that, and there's very few, it's, like, CAS does it, you guys do it. There's very few institutes that really actually support interdisciplinary work, and so I'm happy to be part of that. Thank you. You can just hit that button and it'll mute it, and you can hold on to it over there. Thank you. Great. So, you know, here's my intention: just to spell it out very clearly. I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally trying to encourage transdisciplinary collaboration um, by crossing the disciplines here. Um, I am trying to challenge curricular structures that isolate disciplines uh, and center the creative research of faculty in the classroom um, and decenter ser service teaching as you know the bulk of our teaching um, and allow space for curricular risk taking for students and faculty. Um, and so, you know, in that risk taking, this is an experimental space. You know, like if your syllabus has major questions or unknowns, that's exciting. Um, and I invite you to apply with that. Um, so inspiration, just personal inspiration for this, um, were two experiences I've had, co-teaching 
across disciplines. One with Golan Levin um, here in the studio. I've taught this twice um, called Experimental Capture. And then also with Stuart Candy, who's in design. Um, and we taught during the summer of the pandemic. Um, and you know, both of these instances, I was encouraged externally, one of which by Wendy, thank you. And you know, I, I learned so much by having this ability to talk to a colleague who was in a different paradigm, you know, and also had different words for things, different ways of approaching things. Um, and it, it not only benefit, benefited the students, but I also was really excited myself and, and, and inspired by the process. Um, and then how, when? The fall 2023 application is due February 14th, just to be romantic, um, and also to make it in time for the registrar deadlines. And so these have to be rather early deadlines. Um, I don't have the deadline yet for the spring, but I imagine it's, you know, three weeks into the next semester or into the summer. Um, so if you're interested in applying, apply. Um, but I also want to um, point you to the website. It's on the grants page now. I have a, a link for it. Um, but if you have any questions, you can also ask me or email me. Um, I'm very ready to talk about that. And I also wanted to make space and time for any questions that anyone might have. But that's my fancy presentation. <laughs> yeah, any questions? Can you talk about what service teaching is? Yeah, it's a term that I, I've heard in other universities, but I actually haven't heard used here. Um, and I, the university systems that I have existed in have been public. And so there's a lot of service teaching where it is film 101, you know, and like you just have to get everyone to know how to handle a camera, you know, or, you know, film 110 was then the editing one. And so these like classes that are the prerequisites for like um, some of the more advanced project based classes were referred to as service teaching. And so, um, you know, it, it it is also what comes to mind are classes that um, that kind of get passed around as like, well, you need to teach this, you know, like it has to be taught every time, every year. Um, it's not centering your practice. It's not centering necessarily even maybe your expertise, um, but you're equipped to teach it and you have to because it has to be on the curriculum is what I mean. I Not to poo-poo it. Skills, skill building is good. I would just, I mean, I, that a lot of times, I, like right now I'm teaching a class that only has two students in it. It's a required class for VMP. Me too. I only have two students that are in that phase of the program right now. And I'm teaching this other class that has 21 students in it and a wait list of 10. And I wonder why I have to teach the class. I mean, I know why I have to teach them. I want yeah. them to get that content. But it just seems like I don't, there seems to be a disconnect between how we structure our curriculums and the interest of the students. And, and, I, and I, I think that, anyway, it's. But who makes the decision about what these BMP students have to do? I know. We, yes, we, have to, <laughs> we have to restructure it so that it's more efficient. But, yeah. you know, it I know. feels like it's not an eminently solvable problem. I mean, well, just dissolve the program. I mean, you service know. teaching can also be, and you know, I won't put the person who told me this story on the spot, but is in this room about classes that are like thousands of people that are the first class that goes in towards a major that is popular but needs to like start. Um, is there other than the class has an output? Is there anything after the class that is required? A report? No. A, yeah. No, there, like, there's not yeah. a report. Um, you know, we we will track. You know, you'll have so while you have a budget, you have to manage your own budget and purchases. Yeah. You can make the request, but we'll, we'll tell you how much is available, and, and you know, so in a way that information becomes re reportable for us as the studio. But um, we'll document your class. Um, we will document your exhibitions or performances um, and, you know, Olivia is documenting right now. You know, we have a <laughs> workflow for that. So I guess I would say that that's like 
support that we provide. There isn't like a mandate on the on the faculty side to provide a report to us. Okay. No, so it's not, not the end of a grant and therefore you have to do a report or like no. No. I said I was gonna do this and I did it. Okay. No. Okay. What is the budget? Um right now I'm uh, you know I have to take off the admin fee. So I'll say explicitly um, we get ten thousand dollars a year. And we'll split it between two classes and there will be some administration. So I would say four to four point five K. We're really testing on on these folks um, and looking back at our books of like how much is the admin? What what do we need to do? So, you know, and when you say admin, you mean like bill support and Yeah, yeah, or like um, you know, internally Linda might say, Well, you know, this should have come out of that deep local, you know, getting word out about it. So um, I I'm naive and just say, you know, we got this much money, but you know, there's things that happen happen. So I, I can guarantee four thousand. How about that? <laughs> I mean, Pretty good. to light under it a bit as well, thinking about um, we always have one student videographer who frequently is available on hand to do anything from photo and video documentation to editing and publishing. Olivia yeah. Connolly has been doing that for us forever, which is amazing. Anna Jungle Wyko will really be doing that next. And so that, uh, printing costs for publicizing your event, anything you know related to promoting the class yes. might be something that our yes. manager wants to put in. Yes. So, you know, when I say admin, it's like the the smaller things that perhaps you don't want to have to like you know put in your budget line <laughs> like oh we asked for posters and i should have predicted that we asked for posters so instead we'll just hold back a little bit of money so that you know those posters can arrive contingency incidentals yes it's the contingency i i like to be really uh open with things and sometimes it's just too much information so Contingency, we'll call it that. But I'm happy to work line by line with folks. On What's the, the relationship between this course and our regular teaching load? Like, do students fill out faculty course evaluations? How does it filter into yeah. sort of regular academic? It, it, so it's, it's faculty course evaluated. It's on the registrar. It is a class fully. It is not um, off the books in any way. Okay. Um, my recommendation to folks who do have you know classes that they need to teach is to think about how this could be one of them so um, for example experimental capture was required for VMD students um, you know I while I while I stated that we won't require we don't want prerequisites it doesn't mean that the course can't be required for someone and so if it is um, if it has a practice that you are teaching in the room and you feel that you are serving students of a certain discipline and you know that it can fit within your larger curriculum, then, then I would say call it a required class for this particular cohort. Um, if you honestly feel that you are fulfilling those requirements that they need. Um, and you know, it's your curriculum, so you know, that's one of the things where I'm not going to be the best judge of that. Is there a required no, And you said the course needs to appeal to students across colleges. Yeah. 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 So like, you know, it ha it has to be. I mean, it's not that it can be without specific skills. You know, like for example, if you wanted to teach a class that was like, um, you know, collaborating between visual arts and musical arts. You know, some of those skills would have to be in come in with the students, and so the way we've dealt with it, this is um, we put everyone on a wait list who registers, and then a, a Google form is sent to everyone um, as as a way of an application for the course, um, and and that way, you know, the students are able to input information that is not visible to you unless they give it to you. Um, and beyond just like their major, you know, because like the way, the information we have is like, you know, their major, and that doesn't give us a full picture of who these folks are. Um, 
And so that's what we've done in the past. Um, and and I think that it builds a good cohort in the room. Yeah, that's what we, we had like 30 something students and we just did that Q&A questionnaire and <clears throat> got it down to 21. And, um, and we, 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 you know, we picked seniors and juniors and, and grads over freshmen and, you know, we kind of, but also we looked at technical skill and balance. Yeah. Across the cohort. And, you know, I hope it's not a one-off, you know, like maybe it, it can't be taught in the studio again for logistical reasons, but like the, if you build a class, you know, one of the things that I think about in terms of like, you know, picking students is like if this person's a first year undergrad, they may have another opportunity to take the class if it's taught every other year. Um, and so that's something that we have built our BMD curriculum around is to have these classes that are taught every other year in order to allow us to center our own creative practices in the classroom, but also, you know, make sure to, to serve the, the major that we're teaching um, and, and still teach the, the core curriculum in a very specific way. Is there a cap to how many students? Um, 25. Yeah. And it's a full room of 25. Is there a required number of credits? No. I live in a world that likes minis, so I, if I could, I, I like stretching things out for the full semester. I don't yeah. Care, but yeah, I, I mean, because, you know, because we're hosting one class, I think just competitively, it's not that a mini wouldn't be competitive, but, you know, in terms of like, if I have like four full I was semester, thinking like a six credit for a cross Oh, that would be semester. fun. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that a full semester class is going to have a better chance of being chosen. Oh, one bit of information that I didn't say is that the, the committee at this point is, you know, studio staff and then people who have taught in the space before. And that you know that's how we'll continue to do it so that it's people who know the studio well and can review the application and be like yeah this studio this class can be well supported because it, it's I also feel that there's a responsibility to applicants to say like yes we can do this <laughs> rather than just like we hope we can do it you know Thank you for hearing my spiel. I'm gonna, if you have colleagues who are interested, um, I'm gonna put up the slideshow on our website. Um, we have this recording. We, we'll, we'll probably edit it and put it up too. I was thinking the slideshow might be enough, but um, maybe we'll put this up too and you know share it around so that people know. But yeah, there's tons of wine and cheese. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.